Greetings, today on my Focus RS, I am doing a complete overhaul of my rear brakes. All right then, this is all of the stuff that is going to be part of this brake overhaul video for the rear of the Focus RS. And there are quite a few items here. Um, so over here on the far left, we have the two dust guards that I featured in a video a while ago where I did the clear coat on them. I have gone ahead and done ceramic coating on them now since as well. So they are nice and looking awesome and ready to go. Um, certainly, uh, you couldn't get much worse than what is currently on the car. They are rusted to almost dust, um, but we'll, you'll see that when we get to them. Um, so yeah, we've got those. Then as you can see, we have this big old brake disc right here. This is part of the big brake kit from Rayland Motorsport. And it comes with, of course, two discs which are larger than stock. It comes with two brackets to adapt to basically move the caliper up a bit um, to accommodate the larger disc. As you can see as well, the construction of the disc is an upgrade over stock. It is a two-piece disc, meaning that we have our steel rotor bolted onto an aluminium bell, um, which as you can see is just lovely and black anodized. Now, the fact that this is aluminium and the bell is reasonably large because it is a conversion kit, um, um, this is actually, I would say, lighter than the stock disc, even though it is larger. Um, so that is pretty awesome. I mean, it looks really cool around the back as well. Um, really cool point as well about this is these slots that are cut into the disc. So whenever I ordered this, I just asked for the standard angled grooves that Rayland had on their website um, but whenever I ordered them I got an email asking what discs I had on the front which I thought was a strange question I didn't really know why um, so I actually told them even though the answer like actual answer was just flat plain stock rotors um, I sent them a picture of what I am going to be putting on the front which is the floating two piece EBC discs which have this very specific and kind of unique pattern and what Rayland then went and did they custom made this cutting these to match the EBC, which is absolutely an awesome thing for them to do. Uh, so now, whenever I get these on, and then whenever eventually I get the fronts on, which are actually in that large box right there, um, they will match, and that is absolutely awesome. Even though um, these are made by Raylan, there's a really cool Raylan logo right here. Um, yeah, it's just really, really awesome service. They look absolutely beautiful quality from Rayland. I'm very, very happy with them. These little bracket adapter things are super duper cool. Obviously you get two of them, but what's really cool about them is, uh, hopefully it comes across on camera, you kind of get this like, almost like burnt titanium look, even though they're not made of titanium as far as I know anyway, um, but it's just whatever treatment they've gone through, they just look super duper cool. Of course as well, you get a couple of bags of hardware for doing all the installation of this, um, but we'll cover that all once we get there. I then have several more bits. Um, I need to change the pads as well, so I have went with the EBC yellow stuff. As you can see, they are the ones that are painted yellow. Um, you can get them in black if you want. I think they call them the police edition, um, if you don't like the yellow, but you want the yellow stuff compound. I went for the yellow stuff compound because it is a nice sort of in-between geared towards both fast road and track use. So then I just have some replacement hardware for the bricks. Um, these are the pad retainer pins. I then have this interesting little package from Damond Motorsports, which is over in the USA, I believe. Um, so as you can see, there are four little metal things, uh, which kind of look like bullets or something, um, and then the associated hardware. Now what this is, is they describe 
these as brick caliper bushings. On the rear calipers stock, where the bolts go through to bolt the caliper together, the bolts go through and sit inside uh, these little rubber bushing things. And these are basically just replacements for that, um, but they're of course solid metal. The benefit that Damon says you get from that is a more positive feel. There's less like bouncy squish from the rubber whenever the brick calipers are like squeezing. So yeah, I mean, I thought why not? Plus they'll look really cool. Um, the hardware that comes with them, there's like some of my favorite sir clips and then little rubber bungs to go on the end so as well as cleaning up like all the brake parts as we dismantle and put things back together that's pretty much it right then do you actually send this over as well it's a pack of two replacement steel braided brake lines from hell um, and it, as you can see it says Raylan spec I believe what that means is they're slightly longer than the stock lines um, which is I guess a good thing for this kit. I'm not sure if I 100% need to use these. Obviously I do have good quality Goodridge lines on there, um, but if I do find that I need the, these being extended ones, then we'll do those as well. So I think that's it. I think I've remembered everything. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, this is what we are starting with then. Obviously we have our rather old disc. It's quite crusty up here. And of course, our very crusty dust shield that we are going to be replacing as well. So the first stage is to dismantle the brakes, get the caliper out of the way, get the pads and the disc all away because we are going to be replacing them, of course. And then we can get to getting the hub off and getting this replaced um, because it is really just un salvageable it's just really like I mean you can hear that it's just crispy first thing I'm going to remove is the pad retaining clip which is this sort of wire thing right here so just got a pry bar here and um, these literally just sort of poke in they kind of poke in at a little bit of an angle um, so we want to kind of carefully get our pry bar in here and just sort of poke it outwards see sort of the little bit of angle that there is in there I didn't want to just jam my pry bar in there and just you know like use the butt of it to you know pry it out because I don't want to damage the underlying paint here on the caliper as much as possible so I'm kind of just being like super duper careful and cautious with that um, but yeah it's essentially the process kind of just sort of sliding it in and then just pulling on it so there are a couple of bolts that are joining the two halves of the caliper together and they are like underneath these sort of rubbery plastic bits. So here, one on top and here, one on bottom. Pop the little cap off. So you just use a pry bar just to get that off of there. So obviously one on both of them. Okay, and we go here with an H7 Allen key. So just get that in there and Listen. Right, this bottom one then is pretty much exactly the same. Um, well, it is exactly the same, but um, we have a little bit of an issue with regards to the positioning of the sway bar here, because as you can see, getting our Allen key in there is just not gonna happen. Um, now what you can do is you could use just a regular seven mil Allen key, probably has a bit of a shorter head that you could get into that space. Or alternatively, you can use a ball ended Allen key and just go in at a slight angle. Um, these aren't at like super high torque or anything, so it's not a big issue going in at a slightly off angle. You see, that'll be the angle that we're going in there. It's reasonably straight, uh, but it's not quite straight, um, but it will be fine. Just remove. Exact same way. It'll come out. You can see sort of down here, uh, you can see it rotating and essentially it'll get to a point. I mean, if you're lucky, it'll come all the way out. Um, without any issue. Mine has a bit of crud on there and, and that crud is kind of just sort of catching on the uh, rubber bushing thing. So it kind of gets to around about this point as you can see and then it's just spinning because it's not actually, the threads aren't actually engaging anymore um, but it's just um, kind of stuck essentially. Um, so again with the pry bar, just getting on this little lip right here thumb behind it and then just push and push and then eventually we can get this in in front of the bolt and continue oops, continue to push and it pops right out 
You can see the crud on there. Nice. Okay, at this point, Dan, we can lift the top part of the caliper off uh, because it is no longer bolted to the carrier here. So what we want to do is, I mean, you can kind of, maybe you can see that it's a little bit loose here, but what we're more likely to need to do is to grab our little pry bar and just like gently apply a little bit of pressure just because it's still likely to be pressing against the disc a little bit um, so you're not likely to be able to just do it with your hand alone. So yeah, pretty well encrusted on there onto those old pads. Should have worn gloves of course, but anyway. The next thing is to get our pads out here. And I mean, they theoretically should just like pop out, um, but they are pretty corroded, pretty cruddy in there. So again, I'm back utilizing my trusty pry tool. Obviously I can do it up against this disc because I don't really care about it, we're replacing it. Ugh. Yes, so not a whole lot of meat left on that. Same thing on the other side. Ugh. There we go. Um, so yeah, that's the old pads out. With the pads out, I can do a little side by side just to show you how worn my old pads are. So if we take, um, so this one, for example, you can see a tiny little bit of meat left on the bone compared to that. You know, it's like kind of a night and day difference. If I can get like a sort of side on. Yeah, you could quite easily say that these were toast a while ago. Um, but yeah, definitely going to have a lot more um, stopping power with, of course, the yellow stuff compound on here as well. It's going to be much better than just this like stock Ford stuff. Um, but yeah, those pads are toast. Okay, next then there's a couple of things that we need to do. We need to roll in our piston in here, but I'm gonna just continue uh, with this part and get the carrier off here. So around the back here, there are two e-torx bolts. They require an E10 socket like this. Um, so before we do that, um, I mean, it, it's pretty cruddy around there. So it's a good idea to give these a rub with a wire brush, give them a little spritz with some WD-40, and then we should get them out no problem. So yeah, uh, pretty dirty, obviously, as you can see. Uh, so I'll give these a really good cleanup and all that before they go back on. I won't show you necessarily because this isn't a detailing video, um, but yeah, I'll get this all nicely done and cleaned, and then we can move on to rolling in that piston. The first thing we actually need to do before we get to that is to pop the bonnet and to take the cap off of the reservoir, mainly because whenever we are pushing our piston in, we are applying pressure whilst also screwing the piston in. And what that is going to do is it's going to push some of the fluid, the brake fluid back into the system. So we're kind of like a back pressure. Um, so we open the filler cap to allow it to release that pressure. So I'm gonna get our wind back tool set up in here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a bit, then we're going to every so often go and check to make sure that it's not overflowing. Um, if uh, whoever has serviced your car has been like regularly topping up fluid, um, that's not really Really what you're meant to do but I mean some garages probably will do that um, it does mean that whenever you wind these in um, if you've got a wee bit too much fluid in the system it could overflow so we don't want that to happen and if it is looking like it's gonna happen then I will get like a towel or whatever uh, to soak it up um, alternatively if you're doing this and you don't want to do that you can open the uh, bleed nipple so then that is where the uh, pressure will relieve itself um, but 
either way is good and uh, so yeah let's get the wind back tool set up so from my kit these are the parts that we need we need the actual tool itself we need a little adapter for the piston and then we need this thing that kind of is like a it's kind of like a fake pad um, so what we do is this little adapter uh, which as you can see in my kit it's got an M on it the holes in that will line up to our tool so like that will go on like that and then these two little nubbins are what will go into the two little holes on the piston itself so what we want to do is feed this in here so we'll slide like everything here that I've got in my hand up into the middle of the caliper and then initially what we do is we like open this up um, which as you can see this is going to push that way so it'll basically go like this and apply pressure on both sides of the caliper the side that is just blank with this fake pad and the side with the piston and then once we have that nice and tight we basically just start turning this and that will push this through whilst also obviously rotating the end um, because it does need to wind the piston in. So hopefully you can see that it might be kind of hard to see but I've got it all lined up. I've got this rolled out sort of hand tight just so that this is then pressing up against and then we have our wrench here uh, which we'll use to actually like get a decent bit of leverage and get this really nice and tightened. got this nice and tight with the wrench and uh, so now we literally just hold it give it a bit of pressure in that way and twist mm -hmm. so I would say you know don't do this like super quickly um, we don't want to like you know catch this little rubber boot and like sort of twist it up do it nice and slowly um gradually and it should sort of like squeeze in nice and evenly um so yeah just keep going if this gets loose just re-tighten it with this and like i say every so often go and check our reservoir that the brake fluid isn't spilling out over So, done a few turns, so I'll just go and check, and yeah, we're good, we're good. So yeah, just keep doing that until it is all the way in. Alright, so I repeated that process and now we are all the way in. I didn't have any spillages, which is good. Um, so you might wonder, how do you know when you have got it all the way in and you're done? Very, very simple. A couple of things. Well, firstly and most obviously, it won't turn anymore whenever it's all the way in. It'll get to its all the way in point and then that will just be it. It just won't turn. So if I take this out now... If like me, your adapter gets stuck in here, just gently with a pry tool, it should just pop off. There we go. Whenever you look at this, hopefully it comes across on camera, the rubber should be you know nicely squished in should just all look like this and fairly sort of squished down flat um so that's what it should look like okay next thing then is getting the old disc off just before that i am going to take out this bolt which is the bolt that goes into the middle of the drive shaft and the reason why i'm going to do that now is i can grip onto the disc a little easier just with my hand because you can kind of you can kind of see that it moves along with that so basically gonna hold the disc and then use just my normal ratchet this is a half inch with a 13 mil socket So now we can actually get the disc off, um, but because, as you can see, it is pretty much solid on there, and we are going to need to give it a little bit of a tap. So the strategy here is going to be tapping it from behind, just in this space in behind here, where there's like a break in the dust shield, so the dust shield is down here and up here. So we're going to give it a tap, and then we can rotate it around, give it a tap, rotate it around, give it a tap, basically until it comes loose. Once we've got it loosened then, it'll just slide right off. Yeah. 
If in doubt, get the WD-40 out, you know. Finally, that was certainly well on there. You can kind of see like all the corrosion here that was like, had that discs just stuck to it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, it doesn't look like there's ever been any grease on here at all. So shame on you, whoever put those discs on. Um, but anyway, yeah, gonna get it nicely wire brushed and all rubbed down, get rid of all of this crud and rust um, so that it's nice and fresh for our new discs. So giving the hub a quick first pass, not perfect, but I'll probably do a bit more once I get it off. And that is the next step. I wire brushed the four bolts. So we've got one, two, and then two on the other side as well, which are inserted from behind, actually right back around here. It's pretty tough to get access in around the back. I tried my best to get a bit of wire brush action in there and then I gave them a spritz with WD-40 and as you can see here as well on these I've given them a good spritz with WD-40. Um, so now we just need to get sort of more underneath and around the back to get access to these four bolts. All right with the discs off we can do a side-by-side -side comparison and show you well obviously the old ones are all rusty and disgusting and the new ones are obviously new and very nice looking um, but really the size difference difference is quite noticeable. The stock discs on the rear are 302 millimeter and um, these new Rayland big bread conversion is 330 millimeter. Um, so quite the difference I'm sure you will agree as well as just the construction. Uh, so yeah can't wait to get these on they're gonna look awesome. All right items that are going to be useful for this part are um, obviously the socket that you require to get the bolts out and in this case it is an E14 external Torx. Um, then and just various extensions and bits and bobs, basically anything that you can use just to get these loosened and to get them out. So obviously I've got my half inch ratchet here. Um, I've got a couple of different extension lengths. I've even got one of these little angled extensions just in case. And then I also have impact driver as well. And the reason why um, various different bits and bobs are probably going to be needed is really just because of the awkwardness and getting around there. Um, the drive shaft is essentially in the way, but I'll get underneath here and show you. It would also be quite useful if you have like a medium length breaker bar, and that would be quite handy. Obviously, I don't have one sitting right here. I'll get around the back here now and just show you exactly why. So I am up around the back here, just get a wee light in here. Um, so you can see a few of them there. You can see three of the four bolts. Um, but yeah, like obviously that drive shaft is you know, quite close to the bolts and then you're kind of like working in and around the knuckle here. So just getting straight in the face access to these is not overly easy, um, especially whenever we need to get a reasonable amount of torque on these. They are in pretty tight from factory. Um, so yeah, all we have to do is really, we just need to get it loosened and get them out. I mean, you can see just how awkward this is, trying to reach in around all of the bits here just to hold on to my driver here but obviously being that they are external torques you really want to make sure that you're on it because otherwise you could strip it out and obviously that would be not so great uh, with this particular one I can get the impact driver straight on which is ideal um, I'm gonna do this on the low power setting essentially just kind of trying to like bang 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 just to kind of loosen it and get it going um, not trying to hit it too hard too quickly because like I say we don't want to strip it out So every so often I'm going to just like stop, sort of move any kind of debris that has been loosened um, by like hitting it with the driver or if I'm using my breaker bar or whatever uh, and then reapply a bit more WD-40 just to try and penetrate in there to the threads to give us an easier time. I think it's starting to come out. There 
there it is it's gonna be like the easiest one like these other ones you know aren't gonna be so easy to get in with the driver so we're gonna have to roll in with the likes like I was saying a medium-sized breaker bar or if you can get enough leverage just your normal ratchet maybe and again different lengths the different lengths of extension can potentially get you past different obstacles here um, which is why I suggest having various different things Well, that is two of the four out. You can see they're down here. Um, so yeah, I'll just crack on and do these other two. They'll be pretty much impossible for you to see anything while I'm doing it, but it's obviously just gonna be the same process. Obviously a decent bit of effort required. Um, so, I mean, it's maybe not for the faint of hearted to do this, but if you have the right tools and enough leverage, you can get them out, you know, without too much of a problem. Uh, you just have to persevere. All right, with all four bolts out, we are winning now. So the only thing holding the hub on currently now is the drive shaft up the middle and um, so that's what we are going to remove now also there could be some rusty crud holding this on um, but you know that is what it is we just have to sort of give it a bit of a pull as well as pushing the drive shaft out from the center and what we do that with or what I'm doing it with is this item here this is a hub puller um, I mean you realistically you could um, put something in here and then like just hammer it out I guess um, but this is a little bit more of an elegant approach um, so essentially the way this works is we put this on and we bolt it down with some lug nuts and then we use this pin to push the drive shaft out the other end now oddly enough this one that I have the pin isn't quite long enough once you tighten it all the way in um, you'll get some of the drive shaft pushed through but there'll still be some length that it needs to go um, so essentially I need to extend that and the way I'm doing that is oddly enough with a deep socket this is a 19 mil deep socket um, because that just happens to fit really nicely in here uh, without like mashing against anything so that's that and then I'm also putting a little washer um, which is actually a very heavy duty washer from white line and um, it's just a spare one that I had lying around I'm gonna put that on here uh, just to reduce the size of the hole slightly but also to make it circular because the circular nature will line up nicely with the pin here Okay, then I can slip my socket in there, like so. Get the washer up in place. I'll get it all sort of lined up just by hand here initially. Okay, so that's all. That's all nicely tightened up. So now essentially all I need to do is to tighten the pin, uh, which just happens to be the exact same size of socket required for the lug nuts. And that will hold the hub whilst pushing the drive shaft through. And once it does, um, it probably will pop, um, which could make this sort of fall off if it's not too rusted. So yeah, let's see what happens. Let's um, just start tightening this in. I'm gonna go kind of slowly. I'm not gonna like heat man it. Got this on the low power setting again. Uh, we just wanna gradually do it until it does pop out and also a good point to note as well um, obviously this can rotate um, but what you, all we just need to do is sort of grip it with our hand and that will hold it um, in place it's going a bit quicker now because it's loosened And we're off. And of course, as one might expect, our dust shield is stuck to the hub. Technically, it's not being held on with anything, and um, not any fasteners anyway. It's literally just being held on by rust. So what we can do, literally just set it on the ground, stand on it, and then 
bust it off. Okay then, before we get our nice replacement parts all put on, um, there's a fair bit of cleanup that I need to do, um, sort of like scrubbing some rusty bits off, um, just so that all of our surfaces are nice and clean and ready for our new parts to go on and any parts that we're reusing, like the hubs, to go back on um, so that everything is sitting nice. Okay, a little task that we can get done now is removing these rubber bushings from the top of the calipers. So essentially these are just sort of squished in there um, but if we just pull them this end kind of grips it um, so what we want to do is just like use some pliers to like stuff it in and then once you get it in a bit kind of hold it with your thumb and then pull from the other side see it's starting to go through it's pretty cruddy in there which is making it kind of difficult to get it through, but with a bit of perseverance, it comes out. And of course, there are two, so there's another one on the bottom. And then the inside of here is pretty cruddy. I mean, I don't, it's all sort of like white for some reason. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna grab some sandpaper and just smooth this off. There we go, looking much nicer. I went ahead and of course as well, done the lower one also. Uh, so now we can get our new bushings installed. Okay, so these have a pre-installed O-ring. They do come with um, some spare O-rings, which is pretty nice of them to do. Uh, Damon Motorsport obviously uh, thinking towards future maintenance, which is very nice. First thing is to grab one of our new solid bushings and on this rear section, the larger bit, to put some ceramic grease, um, which I've got right here. Um, so literally, we just, I mean, I'm, I'm doing it with my finger, you don't have to do it with your finger if you don't want to. Uh, we don't need loads, uh, but just get some on there and spread it around. Right then, very simply slot it through and it goes um, from the sort of inside of the caliper out like so. Then we secure it in place using one of these, one of my favorite items in the world, a little circlip. Uh, so of course you're gonna need some circlip pliers, the ones that push outwards. You need to kind of like hold the bushing with like your thumb um, or a finger or whatever. Um, kind of get the circlip approximately in place. I like to sort of hang it over the bottom and um, just to hold it in place and then spread. This is why I hate circlip pliers. Yeah, my circlip pliers aren't the best either, to be perfectly fair. Um, oh, there we go. So there we go then, that is the circlip in place. I'm gonna repeat the exact same process for the lower one. Okay, next thing, we can get our bracket in place, uh, which is part of our Renan Motorsport Big Break Rear Kit Set. Um, so the way that this goes is it goes on this side and then the bolts go in from the other side. So it's like the same part for both sides. Um, so obviously whenever you're doing the other side, you kind of have to think of this as a slight mirror. Um, but essentially when we line this up, the outcrop down here pointing towards the rear and then we've got this outcrop kind of pointing towards the front ever so slightly. Um, so yeah, that is the orientation that we want. To secure this, we use the provided hardware from Raylan motorsport uh, the dome head uh, which is for the top and then we use the cap head which is for the bottom and this is the shorter size of cap heads that are included in the pack and then just a couple of washers that go over the top of those uh, before we go in um, and then I'm also going to put some thread locker blue on the threads we do need a couple of different sizes of hex key for this as well for the dome head we require an H6 and for the cap head we require an H8 so yeah, feed this in from the back and then we will get it started initially just with our hands. Okay, then we'll tighten these up.
Okay, now we are ready to get the hub back on. All right, so we're nice and cleaned up, ready to go. Um, this is all the stuff that we're gonna need for this section. Obviously, the hub itself, our nice shiny new dust guard to go in between uh, the hub and the knuckle here. Um, we're gonna need a couple of extensions um, just to get in around the back for four bolts. The E14 external torques that we used earlier. Um, obviously a ratchet, and I'm going to be torquing these up using my little digital torque reader thing just because it's kind of awkward um, using a full length torque wrench but you will see what I mean whenever we get to that stage we also have some liquids to play with here blue thread locker and two different types of grease um, so First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of greasing up. I'm going to get the ceramic grease and I'm going to put that on the surface here of the knuckle. Um, that is where this rear side of the dust shield is going to go. Then with this liquid molly stuff, um, I'm going to put that onto the splines here of the drive shaft. This just happens to be the ideal grease for that. As you can see there, it's got molybdenum disulfide in it, which is actually the compound that liquid molly used um, for their name because it's the liquid molybdenum. Um, but anyway, yeah. There we are then, that is those bits greased up. Um, I haven't gone overboard on the grease here on the splines. We just want to get a bit on here just to help it out and um, to, you know, not like weld itself. Um, it wasn't too badly stuck, you know, getting it out, I don't think, but you know, it's just good to do that. Um, but like I said, we don't need to go overboard. And um, in terms of putting the grease here, and um, the reason why I'm doing that is again, um, for like looking forward to the future, um, so that if we ever want to like take this off again, um, it's not absolutely like just welded itself. Um, uh, to the surface that being the dust shield um, and also by putting the grease on the knuckle surface as opposed to the back of this um, it just makes this a little bit easier because we don't have to have any floating grease around here um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed the bolts in around the back all right then with the bolts poking through what I will now do is I will very carefully hang our new dust shield on top of them. So in terms of the orientation, obviously this cutout needs to be where the brake is going to be, the brake caliper I should say. Um, so that will kind of inform you as to where you need to insert each of the four bolts. Right, so with this on here, this informs us where we need to get our thread locker um, because there's obviously no point in putting it any further on back. It's not going to be doing anything. Um, and then also I have applied some ceramic grease um, to the back side of the hub um, because that is what is going to then be touching this surface right here of the dust shield. So I'm going to get the thread locker on each of the four bolts. Then I'm going to lift up the hub, carefully position it and get it started on the splines and get it sort of pushed in a little bit. So once once I'm happy that the splines on the drive shaft are located correspondingly into the wheel bearing that's in the hub, I'll then grab this short extension which has my E14 socket on here and I will get each of the bolts started in the threads of the hub. Right, excellent. So that is all four started on the threads. Everything is where it should be. Now I can continue and get all four bolts tightened up. Um, so what I will do initially, I'll get it to the point where the dust shield is like, you know, still a little bit loose. And then I'll do my final tighten whenever I'm happy with the position of this. There isn't a lot of play. Um, as you can see, that is literally it. Um, but where we want it to be is as far that way so making this part as far towards the front of the car as you can just to give us maximum clearance for our brakes. That's all four bolts, just hand tightened with the wrench. And yeah, looking lovely. We've got our dust shield in place, held nicely. Nice sandwich of, you can see our grease poking through. So, you know, we can clean that up a little bit and that will be groovy. Uh, next up, we just need to torque these down. So these need to be torqued to 110 Newton meters. So yeah, this is the setup that I'm gonna use and then I'm just gonna have to like sort of he-man it um, in terms of like the length of this half inch wrench. Um, 
Um, now, the reason is, if I hold this up against sort of roughly where that bolt is coming out, you can see we're quite close to the ground. Um, so a full length torque wrench would be basically hitting off the ground, which is obviously a bit of a problem in terms of actually turning it. Um, so this is just a setup that I'm gonna use for convenience. Um, obviously, if you're higher up off the ground, then you might have an easier time, um, but there are also obstacles like sideways. You know, we're gonna be hitting the back there if we had a full length wrench, and obviously all the other gubbins that are in here as well kind of just get in the way. So that is the rationale for using just a shorter wrench and the digital meter. So yeah, I'll get the first one done and show you that, and then I'll just crack on and do the rest. Seven. Need to be a bit more than that. Ooh, close. 105.7. Just a little bit more. So that's that one. Just have to repeat that for all four. It's obviously a pretty tight space up in here, so I'll just do this off camera and come back to you once it's done. Um, but there is another little note that we need to do these in like a kind of an order. So essentially like a crisscross pattern. So I just did this bottom, say if we call this bottom right, then next one I need to do is top left. And then um, the same on the other side, you know, go top of one side, bottom of the other side. And then that will be that done. Nice, so that is all four of of our hub bolts nicely torqued up to spec. One thing we do need to do though is to finish up our drive shaft. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull this through a bit and then I'm gonna put a nice shiny new bolt on there. Okay, so let's talk about these hub bolts then. So this is one that came off. Now, Ford say that these are single use. These are what are known as torque to yield bolts. So essentially you torque them to a certain spec and then you torque them a bit more. I guess it slightly deforms the bolt a little bit, but that's the whole idea is that by design, I don't think I need to go into more more detail about the reasoning behind it. Um, but yeah, essentially because that is the nature of the bolts, they are considered to be single use. Um, even though, you know, to the eye, it looks absolutely fine. Um, we do need to just change this out. Um, so I have a replacement right here, which I got from Graham Good Racing. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, use the old bolt. Um, I'm gonna put it in and I'm gonna tighten it up a bit. The force of the big massive washer pushing against the hub um, is going to pull our drive shaft out through um, now, just putting the new one in and torquing it up to spec would probably do the same thing. Um, but I figure I might as well just help it along a little bit using the old bolt before it goes in the bin. So when doing this, we want this to be pretty slippy and slidey. So I grabbed our liquid molly here again, and I put a generous amount on the, the big face of the washer and on the other side as well, because we want that to be nice and slippy slidey whilst we are pulling that through. I can get this in here just initially by hand just to locate it on the threads. Okay, just gonna like tighten this up and then I'll take it out, check to see where the drive shaft is along the bearing and then maybe do it a couple more times just back and forth just as we gradually pull the drive shaft through. So I could do this by hand, um, but just for speed and convenience, I'm gonna use the impact driver on the lowest power setting. We're not trying to damage anything, I'm just trying to speed the process up a little. So I'd say that's pretty good. It's pretty close to where it was, you know, from factory, which is in the region of maybe a centimeter or so from the edge. Um, so that is pretty sweet. So now we can grab our new bolt and get that started in here and torque that up appropriately. And we can throw our old one in the bin. Okay, so just starting off by hand with our regular wrench. It's the exact same 13 mil socket from before. So just gonna turn this as you can see, it's starting to rotate, which obviously we don't want. Um, so the first part, I'm just gonna continue with this and I'm gonna hold this until I can't hold it anymore. And then once we do that, we will switch over to the torque wrench. 
That's about as far as I can get it um, with just holding this with my hand to stop it rotating. Now this is kind of the problem with getting this torqued. Unless you have like hands of absolute steel, it gets like basically impossible to stop this from rotating no matter how hard you hold onto it. Um, but I do have a little trick up my sleeve for this. So basically because I'm quite low to the ground, I've got my breaker bar here and I have these old wheel nuts on here which I don't really care about if they get marked up. So we put the breaker bar kind of like in between three of these nuts, two on one side, one on the other, and then it's going all the way down to the ground. So now what I need to do is just basically put my foot on this and this like whole setup will stop the hub from rotating and will allow us to get the torque into the bolt. So as I mentioned, this is a two-step process. So we do need the torque wrench, of course, and stage one is torquing to 45 Newton meters. And then for stage two, we need a Sharpie or something like it, but we'll get to that after I get 45 Newton meters in with the torque wrench. Okay, now for the Sharpie. So what we want to do is we want to mark on the bolt where it currently is and then we need to work out 90 degrees. So a right angle, which would be say approximately down here and put another little mark, right? So then we just keep tightening this until the little mark on the bolt matches up with the second mark that is 90 degrees away. And then once we do that, we will be fully torqued because the stage one and stage two combined torque spec is 45 Newton meters plus 90 degrees. So let's do that now. Okay, I've got my marks on here. I don't know if you can see them. You can, well, you can certainly see that one, but that one you can't really maybe see. Uh, but yeah, like I say, just gonna torque this now. Just gonna keep turning it until this line matches up with this line. Hopefully you can see that's where our lines are and they are matching up nicely. So. That is now fully torqued, so we are completely done with the hub. Okay, so time to get the disc on. First thing we need to do is we need to give it a clean down the surface of the rotors, uh, both sides using some brake cleaner. So just kind of spray some onto a rag and then buff down the rear face and then we can do the front face once we are on. Okay, so before I get the disc onto the hub, I'm gonna put some grease on. So I'm just gonna use the same ceramic grease that we have been using already. And then we very simply just line up the holes of the disc and slide it on. So once it's on there, then I've got a couple of these old uh, wheel nuts. So I'm just going to put a couple on here, just, you know, loosely, just to hold it in place whilst we do the rest of the work. All right, nice. So in terms of which disc to use, um, for these ones that have these slots, uh, you can see, hopefully, if I get a bit closer, you can see that they're kind of like pointing like that, if that makes sense. Um, so it kind of like they're pointing towards the front of the car, which that means that is the correct orientation. The other one on the other side, if I had put it on this side, it would be pointing that way, which is incorrect. You want it to be pointing towards the front. Obviously, if you have a design that, you know, doesn't necessarily have a direction, then it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, for this type of groove, you want it to be pointing forward. So now I will just grab my rag and my brake cleaner and I will just give the front face a little clean. Next, we can get our carrier back on. So we are going to be using the brand new hardware supplied to us by Rayland Motorsport. These are the longer the two bolts and they're identical, so it doesn't matter which one you use. Um, and then the last two washers that we have, we have one normal washer and then we have one washer that's got like this little cutaway. So basically this one is the one that needs to go on top. So if we just get up in here and show you, obviously this is going into our Rayland Motorsport bracket. Um, so if I just slot that through, you can see if it was just like a full length like that, it would be hitting off the original bit of the knuckle. Um, so they have this flattened bit. Um, so if I rotate it down to there, it just allows us to get that all the way in. So essentially that's that one in. I'll put the other one in down bottom and then I will put a little bit of thread locker blue onto the thread. So I've got the thread locker on. I've also gone and put some of our grease onto the mounting surface of the carrier. Um, so now we can get this in place. And I mean, it's gonna go in like this direction, um, obviously with the open space towards you. Just literally just screwing those in and they require an H8 Allen.
Okay, switching over to the torque range then. We need to torque these to 70 Newton meters. pads then uh, before we get them in we're gonna get them ready with regards to some grease so i've already went ahead and put on some of our ceramic grease right in here where the pads essentially sit so the idea is to grease up any like contact area apart from obviously like the surface of the pad itself um, so if i flip this pad over um, we want to get some grease on the back here and we can probably put a little bit of grease around the edges um, but where we've got it in the carriers there um, is probably one of the main bits it's where these bits of the pad correspond to okay so that's this one ready to go so the pad that has the little wire thing this is like the inner pad um, so the one closer to the inside of the car um, so literally this just drops in to the slots in the carrier it's literally as simple as that. I, you know, you just rest it up against the disc and it just sits right there. Just got to do the exact same for the other pad. All right, looking good. Now we just simply need to lift the caliper up and nestle it down on top of where the pads are on top of the carrier and just get it all nicely aligned up. And then once we do that, we'll be ready to secure it in place with the pins. Okay, so I've prepped my pins here. Um, so as you can hopefully see, I've got ceramic grease on the shaft and then thread locker blue on the threads. So literally just pass these in through our Damon Motorsport bushings. Then we just manipulate the top of the caliper to line up with the carrier and then we'll get these screwed in. Right, so tightening these up, these require an H7. Right, switching over to the torque wrench, we torque these to 30 Newton meters. To finish off then, Damon Motorsports provides us with a couple of these sort of shiny rubber dust caps. So these literally just slide on. They're, I suppose, a reasonably snug fit, but that's what you want. I can just remove some of the excess grease on the back of the pad here, because it's not really needed. So the final part of this install then is our brand new Mintex caliper fitting accessory kit, uh, which is basically this pin thing. Um, so we just need to line this up. Now these end bits, they go underneath these flat bits of the carrier, and this sort of zigzag bit goes underneath this part of the top caliper. We get one in, then we can kind of like sort of, you know, manipulate the other side. Good old push. And once it's in, it will be nice and snug. There we go. So apart from getting the wheel on, which is a fairly basic thing, uh, we are installation complete. then that is the rear brakes overhaul on the Focus RS complete and a pretty big job but a well worth it job it looks absolutely awesome all of the bits combined together just come together to just look so much better than stock never mind how like you know worn and needing to be replaced some of the parts were just even like brand new like for like it looks so much better i think and of course we're going to have performance benefits as well as visual benefits overall the processes were you know not too bad you know there were some awkward bits some difficult bolts here and there but Overall, not too bad. Obviously, I did it on the driveway with the car on jack stands, so it is definitely doable in your home garage setting. And yes, I hope you like all these rear brake upgrades as much as I do, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please do like, share, and subscribe for more content to come very, very soon. Thank you once again. Goodbye.